With the offseason approaching, league sources say the Hawks front office has the green light from ownership to do whatever it wants with the roster, which includes considering trade opportunities involving all-star point guard Trey Young. Trey Young has been the face of the Atlanta Hawks since he entered the league in 2018. He became the nexus of their offense as the franchise point guard who simply put, scored a lot of points, and handed out a lot of assists. Atlanta didn't just give Trey Young the keys to the car, they gave him the entire garage. Every big picture move the Atlanta Hawks have made since crowning him as their top guy has been geared towards how incoming players would acclimate next to their star. They have built their team to make Trey the engine that will drive them all the way to the team's first championship since the Hawks moved to Atlanta. After a pair of rebuilding seasons, Atlanta went all the way to the Eastern Conference and for a moment, it seemed like this Trey-centric iteration of the Atlanta Hawks would be the version of the team that captures that elusive title. But over the previous two seasons, the Hawks struggled to keep their head above water before slipping into the playoffs only to go down in the first round each time. And a seismic trade ahead of last season seems to have changed little. This season, the Atlanta Hawks have taken a step backwards, with a first round exit in the playoffs looking like the best case scenario. With dim postseason hopes and an injured star, it's fair to wonder if Trey Young has already played his final game in Atlanta. So before we get to the content, we are on our grind to 1 million subscribers, so check if you're subscribed. And now that we get all that out of the way, cue the intro. Right over here, you'll see all of these wonderful human beings that have been able to make some money by playing prize picks. And I give away my picks for free each and every day on my Instagram at the Flight Mike and Snapchat at Flight Mike Snap. And right now they're hooking up my subscribers fat when you use my promo code Flight Mike when you sign up for prize picks. And thank you, prize picks for the sponsor. Mike check 1212. What's going on everybody? The Trey Young era began with one of the most consequential trades in NBA history. On draft night in 2018, the Atlanta Hawks agreed to a deal with the Dallas Mavericks that would net each team their new franchise star. Atlanta agreed to trade the number three overall pick to the Dallas Mavericks in exchange for the fifth pick and their top five protected first round pick the following year. As a result, the Hawks drafted Luka Doncic third overall before trading him to the Mavericks for Trey Young, who Dallas selected fifth overall. That night, Atlanta decided that Trey Young, not Luka Doncic, would be the man who'd eventually lead them to a championship. But the Atlanta Hawks were not a good team during Trey Young's first two seasons in the NBA, finishing 29 and 53 and 20 and 47. The Hawks were still working through their painstaking rebuild, but all the losing gave the Hawks a chance to put the ball in Trey's hands, basically as much as possible to see what they had. Now, luckily for the Atlanta Hawks, it turns out that Trey Young was a pretty good point guard. Just like he had shown at Oklahoma, Trey Young quickly showed that he was a dazzling offensive powerhouse. Opponents soon saw how his slick ball handling, unlimited shooting range, and crafty passing made him one of the hardest players in the league to guard. Some people called him a flopping culprit, which he often did while initiating contact to constantly get to the free throw line, but he quickly proved that he had a unique ability to make things happen on offense. Trey would finish as the rookie of the year runner-up to Luka Doncic before making his first all-star game as a starter during his second season. That year, he averaged nearly 30 points per game, the fourth most in the NBA, and over nine assists per game, which was the second most in the league. The Hawks, however, still weren't really looking good. But at least they finally had a star, something the franchise had been sorely lacking, even during their recent playoff streak. Prior to bottoming out in 2017 to 2018, which was the season before drafting Trey Young, the Hawks made the playoffs for 10 consecutive seasons. But in five of those seasons, they lost in the first round, and twice during that run, they even even had a losing record. They peaked during the 2014 to 2015 season with a franchise record 60 wins, and four of their starters were named to the All-Star team. And while Al Horford, Paul Millsap, Jeff Teague, and Kyle Korver had great seasons, none of them were considered to be one of the league's top stars. They advanced all the way to the 2015 Eastern Conference Finals, their first conference finals appearance since the team moved to Atlanta. But even they were no match for LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers who promptly swept them on the doorstep of the NBA Finals. It took the Hawks seven years of playoff experience before they finally got to the conference finals in year eight. The Hawks, led by ball-dominant Trey Young, didn't look anything like those teams, and early 
on, the constant losing made it difficult to envision the Hawks having that kind of run anytime soon. Atlanta expected to take a sizable step forward during the 2020 to 2021 season. They signed veteran players like Danilo Gallinari, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Rajon Rondo, and Chris Dunn. The group also included center Clint Capella, who was finally healthy after the Hawks had traded for him during the prior season. But even with the addition of these veterans, the Hawks looked like they were going nowhere fast. Atlanta was still losing, which exasperated growing tensions within the organization. After a 14-20 start, the Hawks fired head coach Lloyd Pierce, who failed to meet expectations in his third season and whose relationship with Trey Young had soured. Reports quickly emerged that Trey and several Hawks were on board with a coaching change after a long history of built-up frustration. To replace Pierce, the Hawks named assistant coach Nate McMillan the interim head coach. And as it turned out, this was the greatest move that Atlanta Hawks have made during the Trey Young era. The Hawks catapulted from the 11th spot in the Eastern Conference all the way to 5th place by the end of the season. Atlanta went from outside of the playoffs altogether to clinching a playoff spot outright thanks to their 27-11 finish to end the season 10 games over 500. Improbably, Trey Young's Hawks were finally in the playoffs. Their first round opponent was the New York Knicks, who owned a higher seed with home court advantage in their first playoff series in 8 years. The passionate New York crowd just minutes into game 1 consistently targeted an obscene chant towards Trey Young, and probably one of my favorite moments in recent NBA playoff history. So they're psyched to be back in the postseason. But Trey got the last laugh that night, hitting the game-winning floater as the Hawks won the season opener. The Knicks evened the series with a Game 2 victory, during which a fan spat on Trey Young. But Atlanta's defense held the Knicks to under 100 points in each of the next three games to emphatically win the series in five games. Trey spent the closeout game reminding Knicks fans about the spitting incident, talking trash to Knicks fans at the free throw line, and bowing after a late three to end the Knicks season. An absolute instant classic from Trey Young, which was without a doubt his first signature moment in his NBA career. Their next opponent, the top-seeded 76ers, would be a much tougher challenge, but this series would be iconic as well, as no team was ever the same ever again following this series. Trey Young and the Hawks once again came out swinging. Trey scored 35 points along with 10 assists in Game 1 as Atlanta stole the series opener. Although Philly won the next two games, Atlanta gutted out Game 4 at home with the help of late free throws from Trey and a frantic finish on defense. In Game 5 in Philadelphia, Trey scored 39 points to help the Hawks rally from down 26 points to win, and although they couldn't finish off Philadelphia in Game 6, they once again got the last laugh in Game 7. Ben Simmons infamously decided not to attempt a layup late in the fourth quarter, and about a minute of game time later, Trey Young shook off his rough shooting night to hit a dagger three-pointer that the 76ers never recovered from to win the series and advance to the 2021 Eastern Conference Finals. The pre the previous era of Hawks basketball needed the better part of a decade to reach the conference finals, but Trey Young's Hawks did it in their first postseason appearance. Four victories away from the NBA Finals, the Hawks looked good initially against the Milwaukee Bucks. Trey Young went off for 48 points in Game 1, as Atlanta remained perfect in season openers to take a 1-0 series lead. Hawks fans were actually thinking that they can do it. This was their chance to finally make it into the NBA Finals, but the Hawks lost the next two games and the worst case scenario would ensue, as Trey Young would get lost to a foot injury after he stepped on a referee's foot, which would ultimately cost him games 4 and 5. Now, Atlanta surprisingly won game 4 without him after Giannis Antetokounmpo hurt his knee, but lost game 5 and the series in game 6 after Trey Young returned to log a bad shooting night. The Hawks' magical postseason ride was over, and the Bucks went on to win the 2021 NBA Finals. A little over two years later and Trey Young seemingly dismissed Milwaukee's title, saying that he believed Atlanta would have won the finals had he not been injured. And the team's front office apparently agreed as they decided to invest mostly in the current roster. They brought back restricted free agent John Collins with a big five-year extension. Capella was also signed to a two-year extension, as did former first-round pick Kevin Herter with a four-year extension. They also brought back veteran Solomon Hill and Lou Williams. And to top it all off, Atlanta signed Trey Young to a five-year contract extension worth over 200 
$100 million, further cementing his place in Atlanta as their franchise centerpiece. Their three most notable external additions were drafting Jalen Johnson out of Duke 20th overall, signing Gorgie Dang, and trading for DeLon Wright. So with largely the same team, Atlanta ran it back for the 2021 to 2022 season, but things would look a lot different for the Atlanta Hawks this year. Trey once again put up huge numbers while staying healthy and earned his second all-star appearance as a starter and his first all-NBA selection. But the Hawks didn't look much better than the year before and in some respects looked worse, including their winning percentage. They finished 43 and 39 and earned the East's eighth seed through the play-in tournament. But facing the top-seeded Miami Heat in round one turned out to be a disaster. Miami hounded Young all series, leading to easily the worst postseason of his career. He hit the game winner in game three to help the Hawks escape with a one-point victory, but that would be Atlanta's lone bright spot as they go down in five games. Determined not to repeat the same mistake of an action twice, the Hawks took a swing for the fences that offseason. Atlanta acquired all-star guard DeJounte Murray from the San Antonio Spurs in exchange for Danilo Gallinari along with sizable draft capital. The deal included a 2023 first-round pick from Charlotte, their own first-rounders in 2025 and 2027, as well as a pick swap in 2026. In order to accommodate the move, Atlanta traded Kevin Herter to the Sacramento Kings. The Hawks decided to make the move towards contention by pairing Trey Young with another talented guard coming off of a career year who'd previously earned an all-defensive honor and just led the league in steals. The trade was supposed to launch the Hawks to another level and legitimize their aspirations of replicating their 2021 postseason. Instead, the season was marred early on with tensions brewing between Nate McMillan and Trey Young despite some early success. Trey even missed a game because of a disagreement with McMillan over his plan to play coming off of a shoulder injury. In December of that season, Hawks president of basketball operations Travis Schlenk moved to an advisory role, while general manager Landry Fields took over the department. In his first major move, Fields fired McMillan after a 29-30 start and ultimately replaced him with Quinn Snyder. But once again, another big move did little to change their fortunes for the season. Even though Young and Murray put up strong individual numbers, the Hawks finished just 41-41 and before earning the seventh seed in the play-in tournament. Ahead of their play-in game against the Miami Heat, Charles Barkley ripped the team for their mediocrity while predicting a big move in the offseason. I think something's going to happen this summer because the Hawks are a mediocre team. They're in the play-in game. You know, you got to start paying other people, and you're not going to pay everybody and be mediocre. They don't play the right way. They should be running a lot faster. They're just mediocre and that's not gonna get it done. The Hawks would beat Miami before turning their attention to the playoffs. In the first round against the Celtics, Young played significantly better than the previous postseason against the Heat and capped an elite performance in game five with a clutch game winning three. But Atlanta lost the series in six games and went home in the first round for the second year in a row. Once again, Atlanta had a relatively quiet offseason despite another mediocre finish. They made three draft picks before finally trading John Collins to the Jazz after years of trade speculation. Their most notable move was extending DeJounte Murray on a four-year $120 million contract extension. In year two of the young Murray pairing, got off to a decent start with a winning record through 10 games. But the same symptom that ailed the Hawks for years has once again hindered Atlanta this season. Since drafting Trey Young, the Hawks have finished with one of the 10 worst defensive ratings in each season. The only exception was when they finished 18th during the 2020 to 2021 season when they went to the conference finals. This was the huge reason why they traded so much draft capital and assets for DeJounte Murray to begin with, because DeJounte Murray's addition was supposed to change that trend, and while their defensive ranking got a touch better during his first season, it hasn't been nearly good enough. In fact, Murray is not the same defender he was in San Antonio, as evidenced by the eye test and his advanced stats. Not only that, but Atlanta's offensive rating, which ranked second the year before Murray's arrival, fell to seventh the fall following season. This season, the Hawks once again own a top 10 offensive rating, with Trey Young putting up big numbers on his way to his third All-Star appearance. But their defensive rating ranks in the bottom five, and they're one of five teams allowing over 120 points per game. The Hawks record went below 500 in early December, and they've owned a losing record since. Atlanta was ravaged by Murray trade rumors ahead of the trade deadline, before ultimately keeping him and making no other trades that could help the team in the short term. And shortly after the deadline, the Hawks
Hawks announced that Trey Young would be reevaluated in four weeks after getting surgery on his left hand. The Hawks have continued to sink without Trey Young, dropping to nearly 10 games below 500 and sitting on an island in 10th place in the East. If the plan didn't exist, Atlanta's season would have been over a long time ago, and in all likelihood, they'll have to win two do or die games on the road just to make the playoffs and probably get squashed again in the first round. As of the making of this video, it's unclear when or if Trey Young will return this season. Looking at this season from a big picture perspective, the Hawks only continued their post conference finals run decline, and Murray's addition has done nothing to change the fact. As a matter of fact, it's only crippled the Hawks' future because it looks like this is a team that will be unable to rebuild. The 2021 season is looking like a fluke three years removed, and the organization has largely been dining off of that season's success ever since. They made the big trade for Murray in part to address their long standing defensive inadequacies, but the results have to call into question Trey Young's role into addressing this issue. Since Trey joined the Atlanta Hawks, Atlanta has owned a top 10 offensive rating with their star point guard at the controls, but the Hawks' offense has mostly been Trey Young and everybody else. Trey's usage rate is only lower than Luka Doncic, Joel Embiid, and Giannis Adetokounmpo since he entered the league. While he's always putting up good scoring and assist totals with a high volume, his shooting efficiency and high turnover numbers have hindered his impact. In fact, he's led the league in turnovers per game twice already and was leading the league again this season before his injury. Plus, his size has always made him a suspect defender at best. The Hawks have allowed the third most points since Trey entered the league and owned the league's second worst defensive rating during that stretch. Their best stretch defensively was after firing Lloyd Pierce in 2021, ranking 12th in defensive rating during the rest of that season. That 2021 run notwithstanding, Atlanta has lost a lot more than they've won since Trey Young became a Hawk. The team was over the moon to finally land a bona fide superstar, something that they had lacked since they had Dominique Wilkins in the 80s and early 90s. When healthy, Trey Young is still an incredibly talented offensive player and one of the most popular players in the league. But overall, Trey's positives on the court appeared to have been outweighed by the negative since he joined the team, and that could lead to a potential trade this offseason. The Hawks already have a lead guard replacement on the roster in Murray. He signed for at least the next three seasons at a significantly lower salary than Trey Young's contract will pay him over the next two seasons before his player option. There will likely be several trade suitors lining up to acquire him this offseason, including the Los Angeles Lakers. What? Okay, I know they're my favorite team, but come on. Now, before you click off the video, just bear with me here. The Lakers can trade three first round picks after this year's draft. Giving the Hawks three years of draft control removes their incentive to tank, so they'd be looking to add players who can help them Lucas. win now. Unless, of course, they get at least some of their picks back from the San Antonio Spurs and a potential deal for Trey Young. Trey Young's big salary gives them room to acquire a star level player or multiple quality players to fill the offensive void and hopefully improve the team defensively while restocking their draft capital. For for his part, Trey said recently that he ultimately wants to win in Atlanta. Like, if you don't want me, then okay, then I feel like somebody else, somebody else will. So. So then I'll just ask plainly: Do you believe that you will be in Atlanta next season? Hopefully, they've never won a championship in Atlanta. Like doing that, me getting drafted there felt like it was match made in heaven. This is something I want to do. Like I'm a, I can, I can defeat the odds here too. So for me, my whole envision was to always be here. Like my whole goal is to win here, win championships, bring people here with me, and build this championship here and dynasty here um but who knows maybe trey has received too much blame for atlanta's struggles he's played at a high level offensively and the shifting front office has discarded quality players like john collins and kevin herter for very little while whiffing on their biggest trade the hawks calculus in recent years has been to try and find ways to surround trey young their best player with complementary pieces trey might be their best player but could keeping murray and trading young result in a better team after mostly running it back with their key players this season, the Hawks have regressed once again with a first round exit looking like their best case scenario. Albert Einstein once said that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If the Hawks don't make a big move this offseason, it's hard to envision this team getting better next season, and there's no bigger move to be made than trading away the face of the franchise, which is why we may have already seen Trey Young play his final game as an Atlanta Hawk.